Captain David McCampbell and his wingman, Ensign Roy Rushing, were not afraid of danger. They climbed into their F-6F Hellcats and soared into the skies above Luzon, poised to hunt the notorious Japanese Zeros. The air was thick with flak fire, and the tension was palpable. What they discovered, however, far exceeded their expectations. A massive formation of over 60 Japanese aircraft, including a swarm of dreaded Zero fighters, loomed before them like a horde of enraged hornets. It was a daunting sight, enough to make even the bravest pilots falter. But not these two. They were cut from a different cloth. Undeterred by the overwhelming odds, the two intrepid pilots made a seemingly inconceivable decision. They resolved to engage the colossal fleet, placing their trust in their rigorous training and sophisticated aerial tactics. As they executed a series of fiery dive attacks, an astonishing realization emerged. The Japanese forces were unable to counter their intricate, high-G coordinated assaults. One swoop after another, the enemy warplanes continued plummeting from the sky. It was a spectacle to behold, a masterclass in aerial warfare. From a Campbell and rushing, this was the opportunity of a lifetime to etch their names in the annals of combat aviation history, and they would seize it with unwavering determination. Growing into its own. The F-6F Hellcat was developed as an improved variant of Grumman's F-4F Wildcat. Following the company's tradition, the Wildcat was a rugged American fighter that packed a punch and could absorb damage like few aircraft. Nevertheless, it was far from perfect. When pitched against the Japanese Mitsubishi Zero, it showed numerous limitations, including a lack of speed and maneuverability, which were crucial for dogfights. The Navy ordered Grumman to develop an improved version, while the Wildcat's replacement, the F-4U Corsair, was still being developed. Nonetheless, the Hellcat rapidly evolved into its own distinct platform. Although it retained the rugged F-4F design, the Hellcat was fitted with larger wings and a more sizable propeller, a more powerful engine, and a redesigned landing gear. Measuring nearly 34 feet in length, with a wingspan of 42 feet and a height of 13 feet, the Hellcat boasted the largest wings of any World War II fighter, covering an area of 334 square feet. The Hellcat weighed 12,600 pounds, could carry 250 gallons of fuel, and was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R2800 10W double wasp engine with over 2,200 horsepower. This allowed the aircraft to reach a maximum speed of 390 miles per hour, a combat range of 945 miles, and a service ceiling of 37,000 feet. The Hellcat was quickly praised for its exceptional performance, its formidable arsenal of six M2 Browning machine guns, and a bomb load exceeding 4,000 pounds. On December 4, 1943, the sturdy Grumman fighter participated in its first large-scale engagement of the war. Ninety Hellcats engaged over 50 A6M Zeros in the Kwajalein area, shooting down 28 enemy aircraft while losing only two of their own. And despite entering the conflict in late 1943, the Hellcat would eventually account for 75% of all U.S. Navy air victories in the Pacific Theater. The Largest Naval Engagement In early 1944, Grumman introduced a night fighter variant of the Hellcat, equipped with a radar. The aircraft quickly increased its air victories during day and night operations, earning nicknames such as the Big Blue Blanket and the Zero Killer. By this stage in the conflict, the Empire of Japan was engaged in a purely defensive war. The days when Japanese forces took the initiative in operations have long since passed. The Imperial Navy was crippled, with American aircraft and submarines routinely penetrating and decimating its shipping routes and convoys. Following the defeats at the Coral Sea, Midway, Eastern Solomons, and Santa Cruz, the Imperial Navy determined it was time for a decisive battle in the Pacific. Admiral Ozawa's forces were soundly defeated during the June 1944 Battle of the Philippine Sea, which later became known as the Marianas Turkey Shoot. This outcome eliminated the Empire's remaining carrier force and wiped out most of its reconstituted air groups. As the American forces pushed forward into the heart of the Philippines to liberate the country from the rising sun, the Imperial Navy's first mobile fleet prepared Operation Show. The objective was to gather the surviving carrier, battleship, and cruiser forces to interdict and destroy the advancing Allied landing forces close to Leyte in the central Philippines. 
Japanese naval officers believed they could deal a significant blow to American naval forces, despite the lack of striking capabilities from their decimated carrier groups. The Empire planned to utilize land-based aircraft stationed in Formosa and the Philippines to compensate for its carrier losses, and as the first mobile fleet set sail from Kure, Japan, the stage was set for the largest naval engagement of World War II. October 24, 1944, was destined to be a fierce clash of steel, violence, and unyielding force between the two most formidable naval powers in the Pacific Theater. Birth of Two Aces As the Battle of Leyte Gulf roared into its epic onset in what would become one of the most remarkable naval engagements in modern history, two F-6F Hellcat pilots darted across the fire-lit heavens above the Philippines. Beneath them, vast armadas were locked in a titanic clash to dominate the seas surrounding the island of Luzon. Captain David McCampbell and his wingman, Ensign Roy Rushing, were eager to confront enemy fighters and etch their names in the annals of history. McCampbell, a seasoned veteran of the U.S. Navy, had previously earned his stripes by downing seven Japanese aircraft during the Marianas Turkey shoot of June 1944. And although young and relatively inexperienced, Rushing displayed exceptional talent and a keen aptitude for rapid learning. United in purpose, the two pilots scoured the heavens, ready to serve their country. Then, as if fate intervened, they stumbled upon a formidable squadron of 60 Japanese aircraft, including bombers escorted by the dreaded Zeros of the Japanese Imperial Navy. Despite the overwhelming odds against them, the American pilots did not waver. With unyielding resolve, they throttled their Hellcat's formidable 2,000-horsepower engines and climbed to initiate their assault. From their elevated vantage point, they dove into the enemy's heart repeatedly, unleashing a hailstorm of bullets from their 650 caliber machine guns. The scene was nothing short of surreal, as the duo executed a relentless series of diving attacks, leaving the enemy unable to mount an effective counteroffensive. Reflecting on the skirmish years later, in a 1987 interview for the U.S. Naval Institute's Oral History Project, McCampbell remarked, quote, We'd make an attack, keep our altitude advantage and speed, and go down again. The Japanese Zeros simply could not contend with the Hellcat's agility and blistering velocity. Together, the American pilots obliterated a staggering 15 aircraft, an unparalleled feat in combat aviation history. Both earned the coveted ace-in-a-day status, downing five or more warplanes each during their incredible accomplishment. McCampbell claimed two Nakajima Ki-43s and seven Zeros, while his wingman dispatched six. Their audacious assault left the Japanese formation in tatters, forcing the remaining pilots to abort their mission as none of the bombers reached their intended targets. The extraordinary exploits of these Hellcat pilots would be forever enshrined in combat aviation history. Aftershock The formidable exploits of Captain David McCampbell and Ensign Roy Rushing on that fateful day, which earned them the Medal of Honor and the Navy Cross, respectively, accurately reflected the broader battle and its impact during the war. The massive naval encounter was a decisive victory for the Allied forces, as the Japanese Navy suffered significant losses, including four aircraft carriers, three battleships, six cruisers, and ten destroyers. The loss of these ships and their crews severely weakened the Imperial Japanese Navy and its ability to continue fighting at sea. It's widely regarded that the Allies' success was also thanks to the might of the Grumman F-6F Hellcat and its exceptional performance against the Japanese Zero, an aircraft that had instilled dread amid Allied pilots during the first years of the war, but was blatantly outclassed by the influential American seaborne warplane. Specifically designed to counter the Zero, the Hellcat was faster, more heavily armed, and more durable than the Zero, with a better climb rate and a higher max operational ceiling. Moreover, by the last years of the war, as proven by McCampbell and Rushing, the Hellcat's pilots were better trained and better equipped, with more advanced tactics and equipment, such as radar and better radios. This allowed them to coordinate their attacks more effectively, and to outmaneuver the Zero in combat. The war-torn Japanese Empire had been unable to replace the Zero with a more capable aircraft in the latter stages of the Pacific Theater, and the Allies had learned to exploit the Zero's vulnerabilities to devastating effect. To make matters worse, the Japanese pilot training program was unable to produce pilots in sufficient numbers to replace those being lost in battle. As a result, by late 1944, the fleets of virtuoso pilots that had shredded through Allied warplanes at the start of the conflict 
had now been replaced by inexperienced airmen who could not contend against the might of the Hellcats and their seasoned aviators. Thank you for taking flight with Dark Skies. If you're yearning for more exhilarating aerial exploits, hit that subscribe button and ensure that notifications are turned on. Also, if you're eager to unravel more fascinating wartime mysteries, tap your screen and discover our other Dark Documentaries channels. We publish content regularly, so stay tuned.